Intamin is a popular pick for best manufacturer. They've built nearly 200 coasters over the last 41 years, about a quarter of those being in the United States. They have taken the mantle from aerodynamics as the model of innovation over the last 25 years. And today, I want to celebrate the best of their American collection. These are Intamin's best coasters in America. Before we start, I need some disclaimers. First, this is based on my personal experience. You will see some very unpopular opinions on here. Without doing a public opinion poll, this is the only way I know how to rank things. Personal experience. I've ridden 30 Intamins, and some I'm missing are small coasters or clones. But there is one major omission that could crack this list, and that's Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. I'll ride it this year, and do a video on it and I'll be sure to mention where I would slot on this list. The same goes for two awesome looking Intamins coming in 2021, Pantheon and Velocicoaster. Let's look at the five that couldn't make this list. The Flash, Vertical Velocity at Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. This is a funky, different experience from other impulse coasters because of its angled spike. It's a lot of fun, but not good enough to crack the top 15. La Vibora at Six Flags Over Texas is a really fun bobsled coaster. And this dates back to the early days of Intamin, before they came to be the manufacturer that we know today. Wicked Twister at Cedar Point is the tallest and fastest impulse, and that twisted back spike in the back row is worth the ride alone. Superman Escape from Krypton was revolutionary for introducing the linear synchronous motors and breaking the 100 mile per hour barrier. And it's still fun, even though it's simple. Finally, Incredicoaster at California Adventure was in the top 15, but then I reviewed this list, and I realized that I could not rank this coaster over the one that was the first one out. For a Disney coaster, it's awesome. Super long, has a loop, a launch, and some airtime, but barely misses this list and falls just outside my overall top 100. Number 15, Skyrush at Hershey Park. I had to get this into the list or else I would have people coming to my door with torches and pitchforks. If you look at the coasters above it on this list, a number 15 ranking doesn't look so bad. I think the coaster has a few good elements, the drop, the first airtime hill, and the switchback hill and the rest is either filler or the lap bar is down so far that you're too staple to enjoy the elements. Skyrush is aggressive, which is why it gets so much praise, but I think it's way overrated. Number 14, Cheetah Hunt at Busch Gardens Tampa. I was wondering what people meant by family coaster when I first heard of this multi-launch inverting blitz coaster. After I wrote it, I said, yeah, it's kind of a family coaster, but what it lacks in intensity, it makes up for with character. Lots of unique elements, a launch into a figure eight element well above the ground, cutback turns low to the ground, an airtime hill, a heartline roll. It's a long ride meant to simulate a cheetah hunting its prey, and it does a good job of it. But since it's a pretty mild ride compared to the rest, it's lower on the list. Number 13, Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags America. When I first rode this in 2008, I thought it was amazing. I had never ridden a coaster like it other than Millennium Force, and this had more airtime moments. It was worth the trip to the park. 11 years later, and a few hundred new coasters later, I came back to the park and was much more underwhelmed by the ride. It had more of a rattle. The airtime wasn't as strong. And probably the worst thing is the metal bars on both sides of my legs. I usually carry a lot of stuff in my cargo pockets, and this was uncomfortable and entirely unnecessary. It's still my favorite ride in the park for its speed and airtime moments. Number 12, Fahrenheit at Hershey Park. I've mentioned this as an underrated ride and I stand by it. It's not ranked super high on this list, but Intamin is pretty stacked when it comes to its American collection. It's not the longest ride, with just 2,700 feet, but it packs in six inversions plus an injector airtime hill, a non-inverting loop element, and a beyond vertical drop. It tears through the second half of the course like a blitz coaster. You're not gonna find another Intamin in America like this one. I like weird coasters, and this falls into that mix. Number 11. Volcano the Blast Coaster at King's Dominion. Did I mention that this list includes defunct coasters? No, man. Well, it does. And this is the only one on here. When I came to the park in 2008, this was by far their best ride. It was the first coaster to ever launch riders while hanging under the track and got the train all the way up to 70 miles per hour before blasting riders out of the top of a volcano into an inversion. How Intamin even came up with this concept using that volcano is amazing. The rest of the ride just circles the volcano and goes through three heartline rolls. Not super creative, but a pretty incredible ride experience. Just a year after Intamin opened Superman, 
Volcano was our next major indicator that Intamin was going to be pushing the limits for years to come. Number 10. Intimidator 305 at King's Dominion. For anyone into bone-crushing G-forces, this may even top your list. This Giga features the most intense moment I've ever experienced on a coaster, that first turn off the 300-foot drop. After the big hill under the lift, the ride is all about speed and quick changes in direction. I love the switchbacks, and I think the speed is great. But the ride, to me, is kind of a one-trick pony, and that trick isn't all that great. I like the ride, and it always leaves you trying to catch your breath on the final brakes. I just don't think it's top tier. Unpopular opinion, I know. So I'll put this trigger warning on the screen, even though it may be a little too late. Number 9. King Ka at Six Flags Great Adventure As the world's tallest coaster, and the second fastest, it deserves more love than it gets. I know the restraints are bad, and at the end of that launch track, it feels like an earthquake. And I have it lower on this list because of those reasons. But 128 miles per hour and 456 feet up in the air speaks for itself. And it's a rush. I'd way rather have this at Magic Mountain than Superman. So great adventure fans should appreciate what they have. Even if it's not quite as good as the coaster that it took the height and speed records from. Number 8. Storm Runner at Hershey Park. All three Intamins from Hershey made this list. Storm Runner taking the top spot. 0 to 72 miles per hour in 2 seconds is great. Not the best Intamin launch, but it still packs a punch, and you feel it. A 180 foot dive back to the ground at a vertical angle off the top hat, followed by three inversions is a great way to round out an otherwise short ride. It's just 2,600 feet long, but seems to pack enough strong elements in there, so you don't come off the ride feeling cheated. The unfortunate part of Storm Runner is the restraints. They're better than King Ka, since they do have the soft straps, but it has the big bulky bar, and that restricts your airtime, and the airtime should be really good on this ride. There are a few other accelerator coasters in America, and they did their restraints a lot better. Number 7. Ride of Steel at Six Flags Darien Lake. Its mirrored clone, Superman Ride of Steel at Six Flags America, is basically the same ride, but this was the original, and you can tell the ride was made for this plot of land, especially on that straight stretch of track. It takes place right over the water. One thing I also like about Ride of Steel is the regular T-bars, without the metal bars on each side. I rode this about 9 months before rewriting Superman at Six Flags America, and I also found this to be a lot smoother. So overall, it was just a much better ride experience, and I have this ranked 23 spots higher on my overall list because of it. Number 6. Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. This gets compared to Storm Runner a lot, and it makes sense. These are only 6 spots apart in my overall list. Accelerator is a little taller. But Storm Runner is a more complete ride. Accelerator just goes into a couple overbanks before hitting the brakes. But Accelerator's launch is the best I've ever experienced, going from 0 to 82 in 2.3 seconds. Slightly longer than Storm Runner's launch, but 10 miles per hour faster. Probably the biggest difference between the two is the restraints. No bulky bar and shoulder straps for Accelerator. It just has a T-bar, and you're super open and exposed while twisting up and over that top hat. I don't care that it's not a complete ride. The launch and the top hat alone are worth it. Number 5. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. One year after Accelerator, Intamin was ready to double the prototype and build the world's tallest and fastest coaster, and the first full circuit coaster to top 400 feet, 0 to 120 in 4 seconds. The launch isn't quite as crazy as Accelerator, but it has 38 more miles per hour, and that's a whole different experience. It's also 8 miles per hour slower than King Ka, but Top Thrill has two obvious things going for it. First, it's super smooth. I don't know what's going on with King to Ka, but Cedar Point has it going right for Dragster. Also, it just has T-bars. This is the way it should be. One of the greatest, most minimal restraints on one of the craziest coasters ever made, including a 400-foot spiral vertical drop. It's probably the best 17 seconds you can spin on a coaster. Number 4. Maverick at Cedar Point. For as much as people think that I don't like Maverick, it is my number 4 intimate. It just happens to rank in the 30s on my overall list. I have the same complaint about restraints as Fahrenheit and Storm Runner, but the ride makes up for it. A 95 degree drop, low to the ground cutbacks, an ejector hill, a horseshoe roll, an awesome launch out of the tunnel, swoop over the lake, back to back stangle dives, and another ejector hill for good measure. 4,450 feet of track in total. What a crazy long layout. This thing just remains stupid popular after 14 years despite being one of the few coasters in the park that didn't seem to break a major record. Number 3. Millennium Force at Cedar Point Three Cedar Point Intamins in a row, and Millennium Force still reigns supreme. This is also the one that I've ridden the most, 
starting in 2002 when I was terrifying, and now I just have so much fun with it. Starting with that iconic lift hill, rocketing up that cable lift right by the lake up to 310 feet, a height that you're hard pressed to find anywhere else. In the back row, you get a nice pop of ejector over that huge drop. I gray out on that first overbank every time. The low to the ground turns showcase the ride's awesome speed. The airtime hills could be better, but do deliver some floater on the way down. The setting on the island in the middle of the park is awesome, even if the overbanks are not. There's one final speed hill before you zip past the queue line before the ride ends. Millennium Force is a timeless classic, even if it's not the best in the world anymore. It was such a big deal 21 years ago, and everyone remembers their first time walking up to the world's first giga coaster. Number two, Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England. Opening the same year as Millennium Force, everyone was going crazy about how epic this mega coaster was. A fatal accident led to the removal of its T-bars and the installation of what we call the U-bricks, a giant nasty bar that sits right on your thighs and really hurts the ride experience. Despite this, it's still number two on this list and solidly in my top 15 overall. The layout is just that good. I rank this as the best layout in the country. It's the perfect mix of big airtime hills, tunnels, and a spaghetti bowl section. I'm happy that Six Flags gave New England a unique Superman mega coaster after Darien Lake and Six Flags America got the same model, which was far inferior to this. I wish I could go back in time and ride this with the T-bars. I bet it would be a top five coaster. Number one, El Toro at Six Flags Great Adventure. This wooden masterpiece is enough to have me rank Intamin near the top of my manufacture list. Whenever I'm comparing them to RMC or B&M, I always come back to, yeah, well, but they have El Toro, and that was worth major points. I was in love from the end of my first ride in 2008, all the way up to today. It doesn't pack in a ton of great elements, but that first drop, two camelbacks, and rolling thunder hill are some of the all-time great elements on any coaster, and you can find them all right here, on this one coaster. It's starting to get rough 15 years after its debut, but it's nowhere near the point where you wouldn't want a re-ride, and I hope that Six Flags keeps it maintained so it stays that way. Toro has to be on your bucket list. As far as America goes, there's nothing like it. It's my number one Intamin and it's not close. Let's end this with a few predictions. First, a coaster that's been opened but I haven't ridden yet. Hagrid's at Islands of Adventure. It's a family style coaster with some awesome elements like a drop track and multiple launches and a backward section with some great theming. It almost seems like it'd be hard to judge it against these other rides because it's so much more than just a thrill coaster. I project it could be as high as number five on this list but it could be as low to not even make the top 15. I'll let you know when I write it. As for Pantheon, this is another one that I think could be amazing, or ordinary. I think this could get as high as number three, and maybe as low as number 12. Finally, Velocicoaster will be well-themed, and more thrilling than Hagrid's, but I think people may be overhyping it as a thrill ride a little bit. I'm gonna put it in the same category as Pantheon, as high as number three, and as low as number 12. There is my highly controversial ranking of American Intamins, let me know how I'm wrong about Skyrush and I-305, and where you would put them on this list. The Intamin list is really stacked. It's hard to find faults with any of the coasters that qualified here, even though only four made my top 50. The other 11 all fall between number 51 and number 100, so they're still in the top 25% of the coasters that I've ridden. Which American Intamins weren't mentioned here that you would put in your top 15? Sound off in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. That's the best way to show your support for the channel. And if you're new here and like to see coasters getting ranked up, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss any more content just like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.